So we actually had a watch list Wednesday first this week. As I was doing my research for this week's video, you know, the usual things. Listening to earnings calls, comparing numbers, reading stock market news, and learning about the CEOs, as well as after doing my analysis, I realized that there's actually a better opportunity out there. So I had to quickly change up my game plan for this week, and for this week we're going to be talking about Verizon. Now, before we start, I'm going to start these videos with the disclosure. Don't take this as financial advice. This is just for entertainment purposes only. If you feel that you need advice, please speak to an advisor. They'll be the ones to give you specific recommendations for your needs. And also, this video is not sponsored. None of these videos have been sponsored, so I don't get paid to talk about these companies specifically. But with that part out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and move into Verizon. And actually, before we do that, I should start. So the company I was originally looking at was AT&T. Now, AT&T, I think, could still be a very good investment, but there's a few things that stood out to me and why I ultimately ended up deciding to change from AT&T to Verizon, and that's what we're gonna cover here today in this video. So let's go ahead, and this week, we're gonna start off with talking about the numbers. <music> So when I do comparisons like these, I generally like to have the company that I'm considering purchasing as well as two of their biggest competitors. For me, that's a good number to have two. I could do three, but I feel like two is what's usually available out there. And also when you start adding more, it just starts to become a very lengthy and time consuming process. So that's why to start off with, you will see T-Mobile up on the screen. But just to give that disclosure, I don't think I've ever explained why I generally like to choose two other competitors and just the one. So that's the reasoning behind that. And really to make this quick, the only thing that stood out to me about T-Mobile was their earnings per share. The rest of it, take it or leave it. Yes, their PE ratio is also under 30, but it's still much higher than both AT&T and Verizon, which could mean that they're trading at a, trading at a premium for the industry. As I've mentioned before, that PE under 30 is just a general rule of thumb, but it's not something that's specific and it does vary between each sector. So bear that in mind as well. And taking a look at this, we could see now Verizon and T-Mobile both did have a better earnings per share than AT&T and Verizon was a little less volatile than AT&T. And again, we can tell that by the beta for this segment. But overall, these are all pretty steady companies that move a little less frequently than the market, which makes sense. Everybody has cell phones these days. It's basically become a necessity, especially for many professionals, business professionals that are always traveling around. And I think we're going to see a little bit more of that. So it makes sense for these companies to not be very volatile. The other thing that stood out to me here is that I noticed that Verizon had better liquidity ratios and the liquidity ratios here are going to be the current and quick ratio. So that also stood out to me and was kind of the first indication that maybe Verizon is the company I should be looking at, but we'll jump more into that later during this video. So the next set of numbers that I, so the next set of numbers that I took a look at was the dividend payout ratios or sorry, just the dividend ratios that we typically look at. And you can see we dropped T-Mobile like a bad habit here. And that's just because they don't pay a dividend. And for this week's investment, I was looking for more of an income producer than a growth stock. So since, you know, Adobe doesn't pay a dividend, Shopify doesn't pay a dividend, I thought it might be a good time for us to look into something like a utility or a telecommunications for this week's analysis. So we're only going to be looking at AT&T and Verizon from this point. And again, if we take a look at these numbers here, they look very similar to each other. There are differences and we can clearly see that they're not exactly the same, but overall these numbers are pretty similar, which means that these do give up a pretty stiff fight between each other. Now, we do notice here that AT&T has a higher dividend yield, but you should have seen my video on dividends by now. If you haven't, I'll leave a link below where I explain these ratios. But from that, we know that having a higher dividend yield doesn't always mean that it's the better investment. And one thing that stood out to me when I was taking a look here at these numbers is we see that Verizon has a better profit, uh, operating profit margin, almost by 6%, as well as they pay a higher dividend. Now, I can say that the reason why I think some of these numbers are a little lower or look a little bit more favorable for Verizon is because I think their share prices 
give or take about $20 higher than what we see with AT&T. But overall, a profit margin is a profit margin. And it's something that I like to be able to see is, you know, how well are they handling their cash? Are they profitable? What are they doing with that cash once they have it on hand? And to me, having that higher profiting mar operating profit margin, as well as paying a higher dividend, stood out to me as a good indication that this is probably the better investment than AT&T. And again, not saying AT&T is a bad investment. I just think for purposes of our portfolio and which one is going to have a better fit inside of our portfolio, Verizon stood out to me. One thing about these numbers, though, is they basically only tell you the current situation of the company or they tell you a little bit about the past situation about the company so sometimes really looking at numbers is not enough to make a full decision for which we're going to pick or which we're going to invest in so when i take a look at numbers like these and i see it's a really close comparison the next thing i'll do is take a look at the news and see what they have going on that could either be news sources like the motley fool or it could be just listening to their earnings calls and that's what i did so let's talk about how these companies have performed during this first quarter of 2020. So before we start with this new section here, I always like to mention, or I just want to mention that I apologize if I'm looking at my screen a lot. Usually when you see me get, do like a quick glance over at the screen, it's either because I'm looking at numbers or because I'm just making sure I'm still recording my voice. But with the news, it's a lot and I don't have like a teleprompter or flashcards I could be looking through. So I just have notes up on my screen. So I apologize if it looks like I'm looking through my screen. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the news and what stood out here. And we're going to start with AT&T. So AT&T was not pretty this first quarter. Their streaming or their TV service, which includes direct TV, lost over a million subscribers, which I thought was a little interesting. Now, I know there's a big movement towards people cutting the cord, as they say, and switching off having TV at their homes and rather using services like Netflix, Hulu, Sling TV, that list goes on and on. So I thought it was interesting, though, that during a time when people are staying at home more and they're not going out as often as they usually would be, to see them lose that many subscribers in a TV service was, again, just something I found very interesting. Now, maybe Sling TV had a competitive offer during lockdown, and that's where a lot of people realize, hey, all I need is this $40 a month thing instead of however much direct TV costs. But again, just a number that stood out to me, losing a million subscribers in three months is a lot to lose in such a short time frame. And also what really hurt them there is there's no sports on TV. Now, you might argue that might not hurt them, but reason why I say it does is because March Madness happened during that quarter, or it was supposed to happen during that quarter. And that is a time where services like DirecTV make a lot of ad revenue because so many people are watching that they can really charge a premium. It's not necessarily the equivalent to the Super Bowl, but it is definitely a main source of revenue for something like DirecTV and seeing them miss out on an opportunity like that definitely hurt the company and i think their financial statements really go to show that also back in 2018 they had their merger with time warner cable now that's been something that really has seemed like uh, just a mess from the beginning but it's something that they're still paying off their debts to for that merger as well as warner media which is a company that like produces movies and whatnot has had to slow down because, well, people just aren't going out to movies anymore. And I don't believe movies were able to be produced like they were given how many people would need to be involved in a close environment and all that. So it really hurt another source of revenue for AT&T. But there is a silver lining for AT&T. The first one is HBO Max. Personally, I don't know why there needs to be a third HBO, maybe even the fourth, but HBO Max is supposed to come out in 2021, and it sounds like that's going to be a lower cost option to HBO that'll compete more directly with Disney. I think overall, Disney probably still has the better appeal, but having shows like Silicon Valley or Game of Thrones is going to be enough for people to want the subscription, as well as, you know, The Sopranos. I'm not a big HBO person, so I don't know exactly all the shows they have on there, but I know that some of their shows have a cult following to it. 
it. And so I think that might help boost up some of their revenue or maybe it might help compensate for the loss that Warner Media had during this first quarter. Also, AT&T's users, or so, sorry, AT&T's wireless users has been steadily increasing over recent years, which is good because that is probably their main source of revenue is from having people using their cell phones. I know that they offered like three months of free cell phone service to nurses and doctors during this, which is very nice of them. And that's a great thing to see. And I think that might have also given them some publicity. But of course, it's great to see that people are becoming more attracted to AT&T. And personally, no news, nothing really points to this. But I would believe that maybe they're starting to get a bigger market share of those wireless subscribers because of the merger with T-Mobile and Sprint. Take it with a grain of salt. I have nothing to back that up. But I know that people, when they are forced to join into another company, they start looking at other options. So I wouldn't be surprised if part of that spike in their users for wireless services was a result of the merger with T-Mobile and Sprint. Now, Verizon did also take a hit during the first quarter of this year. And one of their biggest reasons towards losing revenue is they had to shut down a lot of their storefront locations or the ones that you can actually go into and shop and speak with somebody. And just the cost of keeping those open and operating while not making any money would hurt anybody's income statement or balance sheet or whatever. So it makes sense why they took a hit. It wasn't as bad as AT&T though. And they actually ended up finishing off uh, the first quarter with seven, seven billion dollars in cash. Of that seven billion dollars, 3.6 billion of it was in free cash flow, which is actually up almost a billion dollars from when it, where it was last year. So that's a really good sign that they're navigating these difficult times really well and also making sure they're being cognizant of their cash spending but also having that much cash and free cash flow means that they're going to be able to increase their dividend one thing that also stood out to me with verizon is they're acquiring this company called blue jeans i have zero idea where the name blue jeans comes from but it's essentially another video communication system like a zoom or a skype or whatever people else are using I don't necessarily see why Verizon's getting into this considering the market's already dominated by Zoom. Maybe they see an opportunity that I'm just failing to see here. Maybe they'll have a way to correlate that well into their phones or something, but interesting acquisition. And I think it's something that I kind of want to see play out, but I still overall think maybe this is a good way for them to diversify their business. And it's really not one that I'm concerned about. I'm more concerned about AT&T and the Time Warner merger than I am with Verizon acquiring blue jeans. So with that said, the next thing I did is I decided, hey, Verizon's the one that we're going to pick. So I switched up my game plan again and I did my calculation for Verizon. And as always, what I did was the free cash flow to the firm using the weighted average cost of capital for the required rate of return. And as we can see, with a weighted average cost of capital of about 6.31%, I was able to calculate an intrinsic value of Verizon of 68.67. So now what we'll do, as always, is we'll go ahead and go to Yahoo Finance. All right, and so Verizon is currently trading at 56.38. A little down for the day, but not something I'm very concerned about because I think earlier, actually it's at 56.37. Let me take that. All right, so 56.37 is what I got it at. We're already at 56.35. So this one's obviously seeing some volatility today. Again, nothing that I'm gonna to be too concerned about just because if we take a look at their year to date, they've traded upwards of $60. So will we get to $68? I think that might be a little high of a calculation. I probably should have been a little bit more conservative with that calculation. I don't know if it's gonna to get to 68, maybe more of like 65 is what we'll see throughout this year. Depends on how Blue Jeans does for them. But overall, I still think it's a good company and it's definitely one that I'm going to add to the portfolio. So let me get that pulled up and we'll walk through that process as well. All right, so 
Awesome. <laughs> Finally, I have a day that I can show you a decent return in this portfolio. I feel like every time I pull this up, like I always check the day before, see where we're at, and it's always doing well. And then on Wednesday, it always seems to be going down. But today it's actually up from what I saw yesterday. We were at 1800 yesterday, now we're at 2100. So I really like the direction where things are headed with this portfolio. Now, oh wow, we have lost a lot of money today with Peloton. That's okay though, it's just today. It's interesting to see that the only company we're actually not profitable on here is Walmart. I'll have to take a look into that and get more information on that, but again, that's something I'll do in my own time. I'm not gonna bug you with all of that. So let's go ahead and add Verizon to our portfolio. Let's see what 75 shares does for us. I'm going to give this... I don't want to put a whole $5,000 into Verizon because again, at and is still competitive. And when companies are that similar for the most part, I think that it could almost be worth owning both of them to take advantages of the opportunities that either one of them might have. But since this video is specifically on Verizon today, I think I'm going to add 60 shares. What, what does 60 get us? Yeah, we'll go with 60 shares of Verizon. It's only 3380. Um, but I'm happy with that because, again, too, if I spend too much money on every single stock, if I always see 5000 then I'm going to run out of the fake money on this paper trading. So we're going to keep it at about 3300 today, almost 3400 with 60 shares of Verizon. We will. Oh, no. Edit. Market. Whew, that was a close one. All right. And we will send it. Perfect. So that has been trade. Uh, sorry, it's been placed and the trade has been filled. So we are set. Let's always just take a look at the portfolio. Hey, we already made $9 on it, so that's cool. And so as always, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you didn't take this as advice since it's just for entertainment purposes. But if you're looking for a company or if you want me to review a company, please leave that down below. I have so many companies that I can do, but I'd like to do ones that you suggest to me just because I think it makes it a little bit more entertaining and I like taking a look at companies that I might not even be thinking about. Just don't mention an airline. I will not do an airline industry right now. But I hope you, again, found that helpful. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you want to subscribe, feel free to go ahead and do so. We're almost at 100 and I'm super excited about that. I know some people think 100 is not even a drop in the bucket, but to me, that is awesome and it's super exciting. So once we break that 100, I'll probably do something special. I don't know what it is yet, but you know, that's a milestone for me. And it just means that this channel has been growing slowly, but very steadily. And I'm just so appreciative of everyone that has taken the time to subscribe and watch these videos. If you found this helpful though, if you want to go ahead and like it, that would be super cool of you. If you thought this video was total nonsense, then definitely hit it with a thumbs down as well. But you could be anywhere in the world and you're right here with me. And I really appreciate that. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I'll let you go ahead and enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you next time.